welcome to St Francis Church for our online service. It's great to have you join us to worship. Wherever you are, whatever day of the week this is, I pray that you would really meet with the living God who loves you and desires to bless you. I'm going to begin today's service by reading a section of Psalm 34. It goes like this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so that your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Wonderful start of this psalm, encouraging us that however life is at the moment, we are encouraged to praise the Lord, to bless the Lord, to keep praising him, to keep trusting him. It's an encouragement that as we look to him, the source of all life and all goodness, our faces become more radiant, more filled with his glory and his goodness. The psalmist David talks about how he cried to the Lord and the Lord heard him. The Lord was with him and delivered him from his every fear. You may be feeling at this moment that the things that you've got in your life are quite overwhelming, but we're encouraged to bring those things to God. You may feel that you're not that keen on worshipping at the moment because there are things that you you're confused about things that you're disappointed with things that are just upsetting but the psalmist david would say well praise the lord anyway even when you don't understand because he is good he does love and he does want to support and help and then verse 8 of this psalm section says taste and see that the lord is good when we take some time to be with him, we so often meet him in his goodness and his mercy. And that's my prayer for us today. Let's just invite God to help us. Oh Lord, even when we don't feel like worshipping, would you help us to give you the praise, the honour and the glory that you deserve? Would you help us to cry out to you and to bring to you the things that are on our minds and in our hearts that are upsetting us? The things that we're worried about, the things that cause us and those that we love great pain. Lord, thank you that this psalm says that as we come to you, we can become radiant as we spend time in your presence and your goodness. Would you help us throughout the whole of this service to spend time in awareness that you are with us? Would you fill us? And would you help us to taste and see that you really are so very good? Amen.
service we are going to be thinking about how God is our cornerstone, he is our foundation, or perhaps should I say he should be, he should be the centrepiece of our life and let's be honest, sometimes he absolutely is, but sometimes we have other things as the centrepiece of our life, sometimes the most important thing in our life is comfort, sometimes the most important thing in our life is food, or it's success, or it's popularity, or it's friends, or it's family. But God actually, even though many of those things are fine, God actually really wants to be the most important thing in our life. When we build our life on him, and he is our foundation, then life works better and things are in the right order. So for our confession, before we do our formal confession, I want to encourage you to ask God to show you the things that you're currently building your life at least partly on instead of God. So let's invite Holy Spirit to meet with us. Lord, thank you that you come to us because you love us and you want us to build right and good foundations. Would you show us things in our life that we put in too much emphasis on, too much weight on, instead of you. Lord, we're sorry for that. We ask that you would help us instead to turn to you and put all of our weight on you the only one that can truly hold that level of weight. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you want to forgive and you can forgive. Let's now bring our formal confession and bring all the other things that, that we know that we need to get off our chest. 
Father eternal, giver of light and grace. We have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. And may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself. May he cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh.
to 1, verses, verse 2, 1 to 11. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. The living stone and a chosen people. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be, to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful life. Once you were not a people, but, you, but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see that your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. This is the word of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you are watching this early on Sunday morning, and you live in Doncaster, I would strongly encourage you to get down to St Francis Church at Nostel Place if you possibly can and hear Archdeacon Javed speak on this passage. I'm sure it will be a really great talk. Um, he's unable to join us on the online service this week and so um, at short notice I'm just going to share a few thoughts about this passage which I, I hope and I pray will be helpful. So why don't we just ask that, ask God to help us now. Lord, over these next few minutes, please would you speak to us? Would you use the words that I share to bring life and help to all of us? Amen. So we all want to live a life that is secure, that is settled, that um, is able to cope with the storms of life, the difficulties of life, and we can often feel that we're able to do that until the storm comes and we realise we're not coping. It's so important to have a good family, if possible, to have good friends, if possible, to have um, a good shape to our life that, that helps us to thrive. But when the massive challenges come, even though our family are so helpful, often, even our friends are so helpful, often, we often realise that there's something much more that we need. And the biblical writers would say that our life needs to be held together by Jesus if we are going to cope with the challenges that life throws at us. Um, 
in the scriptures it says that Jesus sustains all things and in fact the whole of creation is held together by him and so my encouragement to you would be to ask Jesus to to hold you together to ask him to support you and to help you in, in every season of life the scriptures in today's scripture in particular which does quote from the Psalms and also quotes from Isaiah talks about how Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the most important stone in a building, the one that holds the others together. At the moment at St Francis we are having a building project and one of the things that's going to happen is that we're going to have some storage built. It's already been partly built where we've got storage on the bottom layer, we've got a, a medium layer of storage up above, built on the bottom layer, and then built on that medium layer of storage is our upper layer of storage. We want to be sure that if we store some things in the medium la layer, it's not going to come crashing through onto the bottom layer, and the same for the, the upper layer of storage. And we've had the architect design it well, we hope, We've had structural engineers come and check that it will hold the weight that we need it to hold. It needs to be strong enough to hold all that is needed. And for our life not to fall apart, we need to have something that is truly strong and truly consistent that will hold us even when everything seems to be falling apart. There will be an inner strength or an inner steel that will keep us going and that strength that steel is of course Jesus and in the analogy that we've got in today's passage it's like he is that central strong big stone that holds things together so let's have a look at one Peter Peter is writing to Christians that are going through hard times going through uh, suffering going through persecution going through testing he's already told told them to cling on to Jesus who is the living hope. He gives you hope for the future. He gives you help in the present. He calls them to really focus on living well for him. And today's passage begins by saying, get rid of things that are not helpful. Get rid of things that you, you don't want to be carrying about with you. You want to get rid of it. Things such as malice and guile and insincerity, envy and slander. Get rid of unhelpful things. And then he says, crave after things that are good. Bit like imagining you're a newborn infant and longing for milk, long for pure spiritual milk, long for things that are gonna be good for you spiritually. Fill yourself with that so that you may grow and keep growing. You have tasted that the Lord is good, quoting Psalm 34 that we had at the beginning of the service. So keep tasting God, keep tasting God's goodness, keep reading his word, keep reflecting on, on his qualities and keep being filled with the Spirit. And then Peter says to the, the people listening to this letter being read out, he says, come to him, come to Jesus, he is a living stone. Though he's been rejected by people, he is chosen. He is precious in God the Father's sight. And he says to, to the church, to the people, to the Christians, you also are like living stones. You're like stones that are being built together into a beautiful spiritual house. A bit like the idea of the temple being built, the, the temple that that holds God's presence. Um, so as the church, living stones being built to be something beautiful that can be a dwelling place for God's presence. We are described as being temples of the Holy Spirit as individuals, that is within us, but as we join together, uh, God's presence makes himself known in it, God makes himself known in a, in a beautiful, really special way. So, and then it goes on to, to quote the Old Testament saying, sorry, before that, to, he says, built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to be like the priests in the Old Testament, offering sacrifices to God. The sacrifices are your spiritual sacrifices. It, it, it is your worship. It is your praise. It is your trust. 
and keep offering that to God, keep pleasing God with, with the way that you trust him. And then quoted scripture from the Old Testament, see I am laying in Zion or Jerusalem a stone, a cornerstone that is chosen and precious. Talking about Jesus, the one who is the centerpiece. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. These Christians that are facing trouble and persecution, keep believing because you will ultimately not be put to shame. To those who believe, Jesus is so very precious. But for those who do not believe, the, the stone that the builders rejected, they thought the stone wasn't any good. Re referencing to those that rejected Jesus in the time of his ministry, they thought that he wasn't who he claimed to be. But they've dis now discovered that Jesus has become the very head of the corner. He is the cornerstone. Those that have rejected Jesus will stumble. He is like a rock that will make them fall. They stumble because they're disobeying what God is asking. But you who are choosing Jesus, you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's own people. You are to build your life on Jesus. You are to have Jesus as your centerpiece, as the one that holds you together so that you may be able to proclaim the mighty acts of God, the one who's called you from darkness into light. Once you weren't a people, Peter says, but now you are God's people. You are chosen by God. Once you hadn't received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So I wonder, do you see yourself as God's chosen people? Do you see yourself as one whose um, acts of worship are really precious to God? Do you see as some, yourself as someone who is dearly loved? He loves you and he wants you to build your life on him. He wants to be the centerpiece of your life. He doesn't want there to be rivals. He wants, he wants to be your Lord. He wants to be your saviour. He wants to be your foundation. Will you let him? Will you build your life on him? Let's pray. Lord, would you come now and fill us with your spirit? Would you fill us with your love? Where we are feeling that we're falling apart, would you hold us together? Where we're feeling that we are not having you in the central part of our life, we're sorry, would you come front and centre? Would you help us to know that the way that we pray, the way that we worship and the way that we live really makes a difference to you and to those around us? Would you give us that desire to spend time with you, reading your word, following your ways and proclaiming your mighty acts? Just in the silence, it may be something you particularly need to pray for today. Just take the time to talk to the God who loves you and wants to help. Amen. <laughs>
So let's declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Believing that when God's people intercede, God intervenes. Let us do so now. Yahweh Jireh, your word warns that in the end times there will be fires, floods, tornadoes and earthquakes. And we pray for the past and the present victims of such tragedies. When the attention of the world moves on, we ask that you will be their provider and comforter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as the new school year is fast approaching, we pray that the disillusioned teachers in our country will be filled with enthusiasm and loving care for their new pupils. And for the children's and youth ministry throughout the Sheffield Diocese, under the guidance of our Mike, we ask for an abundant harvest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, thank you that during the three days of holiday at home, you enable Jodie and her team to be your arms and feet, and that you kept everyone safe under challenging circumstances. Please fill the hearts and minds of everyone who attended. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, for our worldwide Anglican Church, we ask that you will clear the eyes and unblock the ears of all who attend General Synod, so that as followers of Jesus, they will know what is presently grieving your heart. And for our church family here at St Francis, we ask for your cleansing and a spirit of unity to be our goal. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
So as you go into this week, go into this week knowing that you are dearly loved, that you are chosen, that what you do makes a difference to God and makes a difference to those around you. Know that he wants to hold you together. He wants to be your foundation. Let's receive the blessing. May the God of all grace, who's called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.